I wrote this down. I was like, I'm not going to be dramatic and say plur is dead because it's not. Like I saw a ton of plur there. The negative people are the loudest. There was so much plur there. Was there also not plur and people fighting and being idiots? Yes. Hey guys, welcome back to Rave Culture Cast, your weekly guide to the EDM community, music festivals, and more. I'm your host, Emma Capotis. Welcome to the official Beyond Wonderland 2024 recap and review. Guys, this was delayed. I'm so sorry. I am behind on a lot of things, but we have a lot to talk about. I hope you guys are excited for this. This is my first SoCal rave, my first SoCal festival. I'm so excited to dive into all the details with you guys, the stories that didn't make the vlog, my thoughts on the festival, pros and cons, what I think of the Cali crowd, like all that stuff is going to happen today. But before we get started, I want to shout out one of our partners, Lunchbox, who just dropped their brand new mini backpack. I'm so pumped about this, you guys. I have a full tutorial, so a full walkthrough of the pack, all the details and everything up on my personal YouTube channel, Emma Capotis, if you want to check it out. It is now on sale, and you can use code Emma K to save money off of the mini backpack, but it's anti-theft. It has all the amazing features that Lunchbox normally has, the zipper clips, all of the um, uh, zippers or pockets are inverted, amazing storage and organization inside, and it's so compact and cute. I love it. Um, there's adjustable straps, so it's made for men, women, whatever. So very excited about the mini backpack. Just wanted to shout this out. I will leave a link to purchase that down below if you guys are interested. Um, Another quick update for you guys. So about almost a month ago now, again, very behind right now. So please be patient with me. Um, I announced that we're going to be taking on contributors to our socials and I still have to go through all those applications. So right now, I had trips back to back. I went to Beyond Wonderland. Then I went to Austin for a work trip. And honestly, I've just been playing catch up on my work and my content. So that's why this is late as well. But yes, have patience with me. I got so many submissions, you guys. You are incredible. So I'm going to go through all of those. And basically, I'm going to be taking on some new creators and new faces for Rave Culture Cast on our Instagram and TikTok um, to make some short form video for us. So I'm super excited to get that going and bring some people on board. Um, So, you know, stay tuned for that. And then I also have a really exciting announcement which is a new chapter for the podcast and in addition to me bringing on creators um as I mentioned I'm I'm a one-woman show right now and that needs to change so I'm really doing a lot of work behind the scenes to hire help and get some you know teams in place to help us grow and scale because we were ready for growth we are ready for expansion which is cool So with that being said, uh, we're going to have a new member on the team who is a dear friend and has been a guest on the podcast previously, Alex Amaro. Um, He is an incredible dance music journalist. He is a DJ. We actually released a track together where he featured featured my vocals called THG Tech House Girlfriend. He is not the one in your life. He is a tech house DJ. Um, Alex is going to be coming on to handle some interviews for me, so look out for his face. We've got a really incredible DJ um, booked that Alex is going to be interviewing, so he is incredible. He's going to be coming on the team, helping me do some interviews, so you're going to see another face on the podcast as well, which is really fucking cool, and he's a perfect fit. So please join me in welcoming Alex to the RCC family. Um, Okay, with all that out of the way, you guys, I want to dive into the Beyond Wonderland recap. So how I'm going to structure this episode really quickly going to dive into uh, background on the trip. So why I was going, like, you know, where my hotel was, like all of those details. And then I want to talk about the stages and the theme. I want to talk about the features of the festival that I really enjoyed. Um, Then we'll talk about the Cali Rave crowd and what I thought about the people there, Um, my favorite moments, my top sets, and then we'll do pros and cons at the end. And I'm going to do a couple little tips for next time, like things I, I picked up on from my first experience. So that is everything that is in store for you guys. Alrighty, so let's chat about the background of the trip. So I'm wearing my Beatbox shirt today. I work for Beatbox Beverages full time. We are a sponsor of hundreds of festivals in in the United States and Beyond Wonderland is a big one for us. So I was able to go 
to Beyond Wonderland for work on behalf of on behalf of Beatbox. Um, we had a brand new art car we debuted and we had our Beat Bus activation on site. We also were launching our new hard tea flavors. So I was going to shoot content. Um, I'm the community manager, so I was also helping out with them. We had a, a meet and greet with Cranked At and we also had a fan meetup at our activation. So I was kind of helping with all of that. Simultaneously, we were supporting iHeart Raves. They had a content house where they had all of these content creators come out to shoot content. So I was also kind of overseeing that as well. Um, so you guys will see that in the vlogs if you haven't checked them out yet. Definitely go see the vlogs if you want to get like a feeling for what was going on. But anyways, so we I spent a lot of time at the iHeart Raves content house, like helping them prep you know, shoot content, make sure everything was going well. And then I went to and from the festival with with our Beatbox team and with the iHeart Raves team. So that was kind of the deal. So essentially, I stayed um, in Temecula, which I, again, I had no real knowledge of California or the Nas Center or anything like that. Um, you guys gave me really great tips, but um, Temecula was pretty far from the festival. I'm going to get into cons a little bit later, but it was a little too far for me personally. I just had heard that the area around San Bernardino isn't the nicest. So a lot of people were like, you know, don't stay immediately in the area. But in retrospect, I would 100% have stayed at least within half an hour of the venue. Um, but anyways, I stayed in a hotel, I think it was the Hilton Garden Inn in Temecula. The house was also in Temecula about like a 20 minute drive from our hotel so um essentially I did that I flew in on Thursday had some hiccups with my flight if you follow me on my stories I posted uh I got to the airport at like 7 a.m was my flight JetBlue canceled the flight I was as I was walking up to the gate and like we had a little bit of a panic attack it was not good they rebooked us on like the worst flight possible out of like JFK and I was in Newark it was like a whole mess and luckily was able to get on United to get out of you know, the airport that day. So I ended up arriving a little bit later than planned. And then I got my first experience with LA traffic. I don't know how you guys do it. Like, I actually do not know how you guys do it. I had heard of LA traffic, but I like never experienced it firsthand. My coworker Elsa picks me up from the airport. I think she maybe got me at like 2.15. My flight landed. I get in the car with her. I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be like an hour, hour and a half drive to our hotel. She plugs in the address and it says three and a half hours. I was like, are you actually kidding me? Like, what do you mean three and a half? Hours? Like, what do you mean by that? And she's like three and a half hours with traffic. I was like, I cannot actually fucking believe it. So I don't know. Now I get it. Don't know how you guys do that. But holy shit. So anyways, we end up we had to go pick up our festival bands and do this whole thing. So it was like an excursion. We talked about everything there is to talk about in life. So it was a great way for me and my coworker to get to know each other better. But anyways, we drove three and a half hours to basically, it was like two and a half to go get our festival bands. And then we stopped, like got food, got snacks in the car. And then it was another hour to, we went straight to the house to like help them prep and, and everything like that. Um, and then we finally went to our hotel and I was so tired. So anyways, lots of traffic lots of driving so that was crazy um but anyways so that was kind of the background that those were our accommodations and everything like I said overall just wish I stayed closer I think it was just way too far of a drive Temecula was beautiful though like if I could go back it was like wine country I wish I had time to do like a winery or something like that but anyway so that's the whole deal so let's get to the festival so Friday morning essentially I had woken up went straight over to the house like I said we we went helped the girls get ready I was getting you know my outfit done and stuff like that so Lunatics was also there they're a friend of the podcast they did this whole beauty bar for the girls they did their hair their makeup their face gems so that was all really fun everyone was just like eating pre-gaming hanging out it was a vibe um again go check out the vlogs so we were just getting ready around the house getting prepped and then what we ended up doing which probably was one of my <clears throat> my favorite parts of the weekend was we had a party bus 10 out of 10 recommend it was amazing so we got a party bus to the festival that excursion also took a very long time I don't remember when we left but it took us almost three hours in total to get to the festival because we hit traffic then we stopped for a pee break it's it was hysterical like all these girls and all their rave outfits get off at this gas station fully took over this gas station it took like 40 minutes to let like the 16 of us pee they made the they made the manager put on hard style on the speaker system. We grabbed some beatboxes like it was so fucking funny. But anyways, like so I had a whole gas station experience. Um, 
got back on the bus finally got there and our bus just parked like a couple of you know whatever streets away and just chilled there all night and picked us up later so that was really nice because we like knew we had a ride there we knew we had a ride going home and we were all together um just not having a bathroom obviously we ran into some issues but 10 out of 10 loved the party buses I know beyond Wonderland does shuttles as well like I would have done shuttles and probably stayed at like one of the recommended hotels you know for next time but um so that was that and then the next thing I experienced I didn't realize how long of a walk it was to get into the festival I I really had no I really didn't have any expectations as far as like layout of the festival or anything like that but anyways where we got dropped off it was like a pretty decent walk like down this one road like around the festival to get in towards security so just bear that in mind they did have like the pedicab guys that you could pay to like you know bike you to the front um so we do the whole walk there there's porta potties along the ways if you guys need um and then there were we got through security security was honestly a breeze no complaints um we did have vip passes to this festival but yeah so we went through the vip security line honestly it was pretty smooth like no complaints there it was an id check your your typical like pat down with security um so that was all pretty good then when we get into the festival so i'm going to talk a little bit about the stage stages and the theme so overall could not agree with you guys more as far as this this theme being done so well um i'm so glad this was my first socal festival i will say that um But yeah, the Alice in Wonderland theme was felt everywhere. It was really, really cool just to see um, the stages and the theming, the art installations, the performers, like all of that was was done really well. So when we walked in, I would say my first reaction was I couldn't believe how big the festival was. Like, you know, I'm going to come from a different perspective from some of you who literally live in California and have been going to the Nas Center for years. Like from somebody, this is the first time ever being there. I'm so jealous that this is your venue. Like you have to understand, we have like Electric Zoo. That's pretty much it. And Electric Zoo is pretty small. And then now we have Project Glow, also very small. So for me, like I'm very jealous of what you guys have. And I know there are issues with it. We will get into that. But it's one of those things for me that I'm like, I can't believe you get this. Like also appreciate what you have because there is nothing of that scale like in the the northeast at all so I'm just jealous that you have like it it reminded me of like EDC level production like you get that all the time what the fuck (laughs) so um the first stage I saw was like the caterpillars garden which we I spent a little bit of time at then I saw I didn't see the looking glass right away but that was like um a lot of like the crates and that was the techno stage and then I saw the Cheshire what was it called Cheshire Woods that looked so cool and interesting I haven't really seen a stage design quite like structured like that um didn't get there at all for any set so I'm super bummed about that but I did walk by it a lot then it was the Queen's Domain that's the one I really feel like I recognized from all the photos and videos but like again the size of Queen's Domain was bonkers to me I've missed mega structures like that like they had it at EDC like years ago like 2015 2016 and then they had the mega structure for Neon Garden at EDC O. but I haven't had a mega structure like that so again you are so lucky that you get that kind of production because it was so bananas <clears throat> sorry my voice is dying anyways and then what else do we have the sea of wonder was a stage that was inside um that was something also I did not expect at all with the Nas Center but there was also these like almost warehouse venues that you go inside of like within the festival ground so I had no idea that that was a thing um so the sea of wonder was like this cool like ship with the little stage inside the warehouse and then there was Mad Hatters which also didn't know what to expect with that totally took me by surprise you literally like walk through um into not an arena like that's not the right word like stadium kind of seating and then it was this huge stage kind of gave me circuit grounds vibes without being like you know wrapped around you and I ended up spending a lot of time at Mad Hatter's, which was really cool. But again, they had like a separate entrance for VIP. VIP area was huge. I had so much space all weekend. We fucking loved that. Um, and then, of course, we had our beatbox art car. It was a boombox art car. And it was like inside um, this little like glow in the dark area, which was really cool and really fitting for that. So those are all the stages. Um, I'm trying to think any other thoughts about them. I mean, I just thought like... 
I don't know. When I went to Queen's Domain, it was literally like a 7 p.m. set. It was Kaluna, Kaylina Zanders, and Aluna. And I went like all the way up to the front in GA before it got like insane. So I got to like go up a little bit there. But VIP was also pretty spacious there. Um, and I'll t- touch on that a little bit more in a second. But in general, blown away by the production. It was really fucking cool. Caterpillar's Garden um, was a lot of house music on Sunday the lasers in there the caterpillar thing like moving around the crowd was so fucking cool so very impressed with all the production everything like they don't miss there that is for sure um the other thing I'll say the outfits were amazing it was like again EDC level every a lot of people were like fully dressed up fully dressed to the theme I'm so here for that so I'm like about that it was very much like rave culture candy vibes so big pro for me I really thought that was fun um weather as well weather was pretty good uh Friday Sunday or Saturday was a little bit windy and cooler so I'm glad I wore pants and I literally had like a puffer jacket from I Heart Raves but um overall weather like couldn't complain about it it was just a little cooler than I thought it was gonna be but I'm glad um I ended up getting a locker I got a GA locker um so I'm gonna move into the next part of this which is the other features of the festival outside of the stages so um lockers I did do a GA locker I don't regret it because I am pro locker now I carry a lot of stuff on me but for me personally um it was very chaotic and a lot of the times I went to the locker by myself you know there were people under the influence there were people kind of like you know hanging out in there but it was still like a pro I actually did run into a group which was so funny they had a beatbox totem they had one of our like Avril Lavigne cutouts when we did our pink lemonade flavor and I was like talking to them about it and it was so funny um so shout out to them if they ever watch this but yeah um lockers were kind of crazy but I do recommend them Okay, so let's touch on VIP experience really quickly. So I I was pro VIP for this festival, even just based on other people's feedback with the overcrowding. Like I think VIP helps in that scenario. Um, but I did like GA was like fine at some of the sets as well, just like hanging out in the crowd. Uh, I will say so Queen's Domain, very impressed with their VIP area. It was absolutely massive. Tons of food trucks and drinks. They had these really cool like lounge areas. Like they had this one that had like Alice in Wonderland's. It looked like a big like circus tent and like Alice in Wonderland's legs and her little dress were like sticking into it. It was really fucking cool. So the theming was cool. There was a barber shop back there. Like there was all kinds of amenities in the Queen's Domain VIP trailer bathrooms which were nice um so yeah and then they had vip lockers in the queen's domain um area so that was great uh mad hatters like i said was huge that was the one i had the most room by far we hung out there a ton on friday um also had trailer bathrooms had their own bar it was pretty seamless to get in there Um, the Looking Glass and Caterpillar's Garden share a VIP area, which was interesting. Um, I used that on Saturday and it was beneficial because that night I was going between the house and techno stages. So it was really nice because I went to Caterpillar's Garden. I watched Kyle Watson and then I like snuck over and watched, um, I I Hate Models and a couple other techno artists, Fatima Hajij. So I kind of liked that the VIP was split between the two. Um, what else? Other features of this festival. There is an oasis, which is ground controls, uh, like safe space that they have. My friend Grant was running it at this festival. So shout out to Grant. Um, it looked huge. Like it was a huge, huge, huge like tent and, you know, area that you can go in. And like, obviously, if you're having a bad trip or whatever, you can go in there. It's a safe space. You can rest, like chill with your friends. So that was cool to see. Um, food and drinks. I wish I did more of this. Obviously, I was drinking beatbox all weekend long. There was tons of bars, tons of food. Um, but really... I didn't touch on this yet but this for me was just like busy 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 this was honestly one of the busiest like work related festivals because it just was like one thing I just had a lot to do because I was there for work so to be honest like most of the night was work and then I'm you know I think around like 9 p.m is when I was kind of like off going to enjoy sets and stuff so I really didn't do much I saw things but I didn't get to experience too much so that's one of my cons is like there were so many cool art installations that I got to like walk by really quickly but I didn't get to do them so I will for sure like make it back to this festival spoiler alert but I will have to go back to like actually do things. 
Um, but food and drinks, I did get like a gourmet mac and cheese, buffalo chicken mac and cheese. It was bomb. Um, and then the other day, oh yeah, I was a little, t- I was a little lit at um, I Hype Model set and I was like, girl, you need to go eat something. And I went to the VIP area and they had chimichangas and they were fire. <laughs> So I was just like housing these chimichangas like on stage at I I Hate Models, <laughs> like just literally just, okay, anyway, um, wolfing those down. Those were really good. But yeah, so from what I saw, they had a lot of good food and drinks. And then afters, I didn't go to the afters, but they are an option here. I believe you have to buy the tickets separately, but they happen in the warehouse, I believe, and they're like listed what the afters are. So if you guys like want to just stay and chill and see some more sets, you can go to the afters, which is pretty cool. So I think that's pretty much all the features of the festival that I want to touch on. Um, I'm going to get again into like the pros and cons, but really quickly, I do want to plug something for you guys. So if you are living under a rock, then you might have missed that the Groove Cruise Miami 2025 lineup was just dropped yesterday, which is so exciting. Um, Eric Prids is headlining, Seven Lions, Medusa, James Hype, Nicole Mudaber. It's absolutely incredible. The cruise is 97% sold out at the time I'm recording this. So like I think less than a thousand rooms are remaining. So if you guys want to book your rooms, use code RAVECULTUREcast, all one word, RAVECULTUREcast. That will let them know I sent you and you will also save $50 off per person per room so if you have a quad room you'll save $200 off so feel free to do that Uh, rooms are increasing uh, Friday April 5th just a heads up but um, I hope to see you guys there it's gonna be incredible I literally cried yesterday because two of my favorite artists of all time Prids and Seven Lions are gonna be on the boat with us what the hell so I will leave that linked down below. Alrighty, moving on. I'm going to talk a little bit about my top moments and my favorite sets of the weekend. So on Friday, um, like I said, I didn't see too much until like around nine o'clock and I spent literally like three sets in a row at the Mad Hatter stage, which was amazing. And sometimes when that happens, like, I'll talk about the overcrowding with Sarah Landry, but I had other plans. I had other artists I wanted to see, but these artists were also favorites of mine and I just went with the flow and it was the best decision. So I went and saw Joey Ride. You can literally never go wrong with a Joyride set. Like, he is so fun every single time. Finally got to see Jaws again. It's been so long since I've seen Jaws, and he's, like, a classic for me. And he was amazing. So I saw part of Jaws' set. Uh, Stayed for all of No Redemption, which was chef's kiss amazing amazing i love chami and mala that's like an og favorite for me and it was really fun to hear them because it's been a while since i've seen them as well and then i ended up staying for the beginning of rez and it was really amazing i feel like rez is always fire and like she just hits that note that's so uniquely her um i ended up leaving towards the end of it but those sets were all amazing um one thing i will say so i had planned to see sarah landry into Lily Palmer back to back Eli Brown like I wanted to go over to the techno stage and unfortunately it was madness like absolute madness so basically what happened is I was at Joyride and I think Sarah Landry was the same time as Jaws which was 11 p.m. I want to say we made the trek to go over to the looking glass which was like the opposite side of the festival and as we were walking up to it we just hit a crowd like hit a crowd and we were like what's going on this is like really weird like how do we get into the stage and then we looked and the crowd was so far out of the stage like the entire thing was full that it was spilling out into like the walkway kind of like where behind Caterpillar Garden like it was just fully spilling over and this is my first time at a festival so I didn't know where the VIP entrance was didn't know where anything was and then we were texting our whole group and people were already inside and they were like do not come here completely packed VIP is full you can't even get in here like they're turning people away don't don't even come and I was like kind of pushing a little like not pushing people but I was kind of like pushing to keep going and luckily my coworkers were like no this is not smart like let's turn around and I looked and I was like yeah you're right like fuck this and we turned around like walked out of it but like it was body to body no one was moving like full crowd surge vibes moment which was scary and a huge con so my thoughts on that is one like obviously Sarah Landry is fucking popping off right now she's a massive hard techno artist hard techno is very much having a moment in the United States right now and I think they just underestimated the size of her power and I can it's hard because I'm like she is so the moment right now you know what I mean like she's the fucking moment but it's not like it's um like you know one of the major headliners on queen's domain so maybe they just didn't think because she is so niche because she's hard techno she should go on the techno stage is probably their thinking 
I'm sure they just did not anticipate that happening and I guess maybe the artist playing at the same time of her as her didn't draw enough people away because that's what they need to do they need to control the crowd by you know putting conflicts and so I know Jaws was the same time I don't know who was on main stage at the time but clearly so many people wanted to see her and it was fucking insanity so unfortunately, the number one set I wanted to save the weekend was after it was Eli Brown back to back Lily Palmer. And we obviously skipped that entirely. There was I was like, there's no way I'm even going back near that area at all. So that was a huge bummer because one, it was dangerous. And two, obviously, you just can't see who you want to see. So that did happen on Friday. Um, And I will say as well, well, actually, we'll talk about crowd in a second. Let me finish with my top moments um on Friday I also got to meet a bunch of content creators and again this was something I was really looking forward to because I live here in New Jersey I'm pretty much solo on my own unless I'm at like events running into people so I got to see Jeremy Portillo in California with like his whole crew it was so nice to meet him finally I got to meet my girl Olivia Cara and her fiance Seb who she's been one of my favorite YouTubers forever and we've talked so many times online we've tried meeting up at EDC like three years in a row and it never happens and we just literally bumped into each other in the crowd and I fucking freaked out like it just was like seeing a long lost sister so I fucking love Olivia and it was just so amazing to see her there are so many other people I didn't get to see so I'm so bummed about that you guys but like I will for, like now that I've done it I can see that it's worth coming out for a two-day festival even though I wished it was three days but um I, I will be back because there's so many people I didn't get to see oh I met Brett outraging it, you know just so many content creators um so yeah, so that was a huge highlight for me. Uh, the techno stage on the last day was a huge highlight for me. So on Sunday, the main sets I saw was Kyle Watson, love him. Um, and then I Hate Models was probably my favorite. That and No Redemption were like my top two sets of the whole weekend. But I Hate Models was fucking incredible. Like could not recommend more absolutely amazing like Parisian techno artists like fire and then before him oh, I don't want to butcher their name it was a techno artist I had never heard of before and it was like also probably in my top three sets was it Trium Tyrum no tr- I don't know if it's Trium T-R-Y-M all capital I don't know how you pronounce his name I apologize amazing amazing and I think his name is on the EDC Vegas lineup so like absolutely going to be down for that um and then nine times nine was on at the end and I think I stayed for a little bit of that and then I left to go see slander at the main stage which was amazing so so much good music loved all the techno I did see a little bit of Fatima Hajij I know I talked about her I honestly had to like run away on my own side quest and I went and saw her on my own um and caught the end of her and it was everything I thought it would be it was so heavy it was so good uh other funny story I ended up on Pasquale's sky deck (laughs) I don't know how it happened got invited up there got to hang out in his sky deck for the slander set it was huge Pasquale was there I said hi to him really quickly I didn't want to bother him I was freaking out uh but that was amazing so that was a whole experience so you guys will see that in this the day two vlogs um but that was just like what is going on so that was really cool uh we had an amazing meet and greet with cranked at at our beat bus uh he was so nice his fans all came out it was absolutely packed for him so we're gonna do a lot more of those uh, meet and greets for you guys for sure at our festivals so i'm super pumped about that and then I put the, the stop at the gas station on day one was really, really funny. So yeah, uh, probably so many more moments I'm not even thinking about. But just just seeing my coworkers in person as well, because we, we all work remote for the most part. Um, just spending time with my beatbox coworkers was really, really, really fun. Um, and it was cool. The, the girls that we had and the group that we had, girls and guys for I Heart Raves were wonderful. And they were so fun to work with. And they're all so creative. And I feel like sometimes influencers get like a bad rap. Um but I I can like attest to it just from working with them like for being in such a strong group of women like they all have such fiery fun creative personalities they it was just so funny being around them like they're so full of life and I don't know I feel like sometimes people shit on influencers and say they make the scene worse and I'm sure there are bad apples there are bad apples at every festival there were 90,000 people at Beyond Wonderland to say that there's going to be no issues with people is you know it's not going to happen um but I can at least say that they were so fun and so lovely to work with so um it just was cool being a part of that group so I just want to throw that out there all right we're getting to the end here you guys so let's talk about pros um so I already touched on it so I won't get into it the theme loved the theme of this big fan I think if you guys are going to be on Wonderland Chicago 
Um, that's I can't go this year, but that's definitely going to be on the list because I think this theming is amazing. So I'm really happy they've continued it to like the Pacific Northwest and to Chicago. Please, for the love of God, can they bring it to New York City <laughs> or New Jersey? Because I loved it. Um, the outfits, the theming outfits, how people got into it. You know that I thought that was really really fun. Stages and production, huge pro. Sound was way better than I thought it was. I was very curious because I've watched people's vlogs when they're at like Queen's Domain and Caterpillar's Garden. They're so far back and I always wondered like would the sound be good and it was like it definitely was. They have speaker systems and screens like all the way back through the mega structures. So sound was really fantastic. It was so much bigger, like I said, than I thought it was. And I wish I had gotten over to like the Cheshire Woods stage. I wish I had done more of Sea of Wonder. So um, I honestly think this festival could be three days. And I know that's a lot. Okay. Pump the brakes, Emma. Pump the brakes. I know, guys. But for me, flying all the way to California and it Again, I was working a lot of it. So I was like, oh, I wish I had one more day to explore. And like they put so much work into the the production and building those state, like building all that. Like I, I could have personally used one more day. That's just me. I think the theming was amazing. Maybe not all the Nas events, you guys. Maybe not like Countdown and everything. Maybe not Escape. But I thought Beyond could be another day personally. Um, I liked the VIP sections honestly pretty much no complaints there like obviously bathroom lines got pretty long at some of them um and I was pissed I couldn't get in there on Friday for the Sarah Landry stage but otherwise VIP was worth it to me um there was so much to see and do like I said I didn't even like there were so many sections I didn't even go near like so many art installations the whole area where the beat um beatbox like boombox art car was like I said was like this room that was all like glow in the dark there were performers doing like photo ops in there there were like um like turf areas or whatever like fake grass areas to sit down and hang out um a lot of genres represented I I put down uh, I feel like I got to see everything I wanted to see but there was like a ton of bass music a ton of techno so much house music so much progressive house like big room there was literally everything um so that was really nice to see and there was a trance takeover one day that was at the Cheshire stage and I wish I could have gotten to that more um but I'm a, a big fan of the lineup the lineup was really really great for this one I put weather I know it was like a little cooler than I was hoping but overall weather was great like no complaints it didn't rain really Uh, actually it did it did rain (laughs) I almost took out my poncho it rained very briefly Sunday night but overall weather not bad um and a huge pro they let they kept our beatbox caps they always take them at festivals but the bartenders for the most part every time I went up let me keep my cap So I was a big fan of that because I always put my beatbox like it would fit perfectly. Honestly, that's so perfect. Oh, my God. I'm bringing this to Project Low with me. A beatbox will fit perfectly in this little mini backpack. So very big pro to that. Um, Okay. lastly, cons. So this is going to be a combined thing. But after the festival was over, I saw videos of people crashing the gates. And like one, I've talked about this before. I think it's disgusting behavior. I think it's obviously immature kids. Like who, what grown adult is jumping a fucking fence to get in a festival? Like you just don't act like that, period. I don't know who acts like that. Um, you pay to go into a festival and you, sorry, my alarm went off. And you enter a festival properly to keep everybody's, to keep everybody safe. We don't know who's jumping those fucking fences. I don't know what they have on them. It's very uncomfortable to like see those videos. It's super disrespectful to the event and to production and to the other fans attending who paid and went through security like everyone else. So not a fan of that. Um, They need to have more security patrolling the gates so that that doesn't happen. And I believe that happened on Friday, which was the night that they had the mat- like massive overcrowding. So I did talk to a couple of you guys because I had nothing to compare it to. So people like were asking me like, oh, what do you think? Like, do you think it's super crowded? And I was like, I don't know because I don't know what this normally looks like. But Friday felt more crowded to me than Saturday did personally. Um, Saturday, I didn't really like just walking in between where the lockers were and like where the food was it was very very busy I will say that um but Friday felt worse obviously the crowds surge at Sarah Landry um typically I avoid like the main stages to avoid massive crowds and this was like the opposite like this is the techno stage which usually like is an attest you know a testament to the genre right now but um yeah, maybe the layout of the festival is something they need to think about or just like where they put their artists. But, you know, that was a con. Um, 
a lot of the people were okay we'll, we'll talk about the crowd i forgot to get to the crowd yet but i did put down there were a lot of people who were really fucked up uh i saw a couple of people puking in trash cans uh i wrote down molly was here she was present she was at this festival. This was very much a Molly festival from everything that I had seen and witnessed. Um, also based on the fact that it was a lot of people's first festivals or there was a lot of very, very young people there. I think like when you get into the scene, if you're younger, if you're in college and you're like super heavy party, like that's your purpose for being there. You know, that checks out. Um, it doesn't necessarily like obviously bother me in a way where like nobody was like, bothering me I just saw it very presently you know what I mean um GA lockers could have been bigger I wrote that down it was very crowded in there a lot of the times it was hard to get into my locker at some points the traffic to the festival now I get it <laughs> like that's I guess just LA traffic but um you know I, I just wrote down what I would do in the future is stay closer because basically what had happened was both nights I had expected to get way more sleep at this festival so that was a con for me the lack of sleep which was our own doing obviously but like I fully went into this like this is a work trip I'm obviously going to get home at like 3 a.m and then go to sleep and wake up at like 8 or 9 um not the case by the time we got back to the house both nights and then we would drive or uber back um it was like 4 30 in the morning by the time we would get to the house we would like hang out eat I would get to the hotel by like 5 5 30 in the morning that is so late for me now like where I am in my life like that is so that is morning I wake up at 6 30 in the morning to wake up with my son so I uh, that can't happen like I just know myself I'm sure some of you guys can relate like I can he I can deal with being hungover now like I can deal with that I can't deal with lack of sleep like lack of sleep fucks me up so bad that's why I got really sick and I was dying after groove cruise because I slept like three hours like each night it was so bad like really didn't sleep that much towards the end of groove cruise so anyway this went on long enough basically not happy about how little I slept I would do it differently I would stay closer so it doesn't take two hours to get home so I could sleep more um more bathrooms at the looking glass vip it did get really crowded there um and i think that was pretty much it so let me touch a little bit on the crowd and the cali crowd guys i got to talk about you guys um but first one more thing i got to plug if you guys need tickets uh, i have my insomniac affiliate links and i'm currently selling for project glow if you guys still need tickets um, i will be there so come say hi to me i'm going to be there on saturday so project glow tickets are still available beyond wonderland chicago and i have day trip as well i think it's just those three so i will leave those links down below if you guys want to grab your tickets um okay let's talk about you guys my cali fam so i I get like emotional in the vlog you can see it but I met the best subscribers some of you guys who have been here for so long who I recognize your names I recognize your faces like finally you coming up to me and saying hi in person like it was just so amazing to meet you in person like I got to meet my friend Duncan who was so fun like there were just so many people um that I just was like so pumped to see so that was really really special um what else do I have here in general like I would say it was a younger crowd which I expected that I expected um I didn't get the like you know this is pretty equally split um like EDC I see a lot of people in their like 40s 50s this felt very much like 20s and then I saw some people in their like 30s 40s I would say um but not as prevalent as like very young people um what else uh I wrote this down I was like I'm not gonna be dramatic and say plur is dead because it's not like I saw a ton of plur there okay the negative people are the loudest there was so much plur there was there also not plur and people fighting and being idiots yes but there was so much beautiful moments and even the interactions we had were so nice but uh, my friend Sarah Benio uh we were hanging out and this kid came over and he wanted to like learn how to trade candy so she taught him how to trade candy and gave him his first candy trade that was so cute um I met so many like nice people just in the crowd just like vibing out at the sets like people were really friendly at the Mad Hatter stage so and like I said some of the influencers and content creators that I ran into were super nice meeting them in person so like I said I think there's both sides of it I think there's always going to be bad apples 
when you have 90,000 people in a crowd, you cannot expect all of them to be plur. A lot of them don't even know what plur is. And I don't blame them. I can't blame a young person just going to their first festival, being there to like be drunk and get lit for not understanding plur and rave culture. Like that's why I'm here. That's why you guys are here. All you can do is lead by example and just show them, you know, show them kindness, show them what candy trading is, show them what plur is, be a good person to them, treat people the way you want to be treated. That's how you do it. You lead by example. So I'm not going to knock people for not knowing, you know what I mean? Um, you know, manners cost nothing. You should have the decency to have manners for sure. Um, so that's something that obviously you've seen videos of people fighting and stuff in the crowd. Like, I don't know what those situations were or like pushing. So, you know, human decency is something people should already have. But I don't blame some people for not fully like knowing what plur is and understanding it yet. Yeah, all I can do is hope that they get there because I was the same way. Like I was going to raves and shows in college and wasn't like fully immersed in rave culture until I went to EDC Vegas in 2015. And that that's when I was like holy shit wow eureka moment and then then I decided to like learn about it and understand it so just lead by example and be kind to others um what else did I have here and like I think I mentioned this was an 18 plus event so it did, did feel like a party hard kind of vibe um and I wrote down I don't know how I feel about this like I don't know if all festivals should be eight or should be 21 plus like in some instances I feel like it should because 18 is just so young but then in other sides it's like but a lot of people like these could be gateway festivals for them to get into the scene and the culture more so then it's like it's nice that there are options to go when you're 18 so I don't know I'm, I'm hit or miss with it I probably prefer 21 plus events um like you could tell this was an 18 plus event but you know I don't think that every event ever should be 21 plus so that's where we're at. I had fun. I appreciate you guys. You were kind to me. I really, really loved meeting you. I would definitely come back. Really, I would. And I don't, I don't, you know, let a, a couple bad people ruin my whole experience or tell me, you know, I don't write off a festival for that. Um, so that's where I'm going to end it, you guys. Uh, really quickly, tips for next time. I kind of touch on these. So just to recap everything for the full episode, uh, tips for your first Beyond Wonderland. I would definitely... Uh, stay you know somewhere remotely within 30 minutes so it's easy to get to so look at the shuttle lines look at the recommended hotels in the area you could do an Airbnb um, I would go earlier for sure we hit so much traffic and ended up getting in you know delayed a bit and I wish I had more time just to explore and check out the art installation so I would go earlier next time personally I would do the VIP lockers um, over the GA lockers if you do have a VIP ticket it would just looks a little less crowded than the GA lockers did um, definitely bring layers for nighttime. I'm so happy I brought, you know, jackets with me. I brought a pashmina with me. I kept them in the locker. So definitely recommend bringing layers because it gets a little bit chilly at night. Uh, spend time exploring the art if you can. Like I said, there were art cars. We have the beatbox art car there. Um, so many cool things, performers, photo ops, like little hidden gems in the festival. So definitely spend time exploring that and get to each stage. Uh, my one regret was not getting to the Cheshire Woods stage um so everything else I got to go to at least for one set which was awesome they each had their own theme and production which was really cool to see but tips for your first time definitely try to get to one set at each stage so with all that being said you guys let me know in the comments what you think I'm so glad I finally got to sit down and record this but um yeah overall I would recommend Beyond Wonderland I would go back I totally get why some of you love it um despite the cons and despite things you know hopefully the festivals can just take feedback and learn and be better for next time for sure um but yeah let me know what you guys think if you went this year I'm very curious so please drop me a comment down below uh and like I said guys I will leave all the resources and links down below if you want to support any of our sponsors or grab any tickets through me super excited to have my friend Alex Amaro joining the team you guys will see an interview coming up with him very soon and I will get to your contributor forms I promise I'm going to go through them very soon so we can start bringing some people onto our socials but uh, connect with us at Rave Culture Cast on all of our platforms like subscribe review do all the things and I will see you in my next one bye guys have a good weekend